For the next three weeks, we're going to be in Jeremiah. And so for this week, we're going to focus on Jeremiah's call in chapter 1, uh, verses 4 through 10. And it reads, Now the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, born I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, Ah, Lord God, truly I do not know how to speak, for I am only a boy. But the Lord said to me, Do not say I am only a boy, for you shall go to all to whom I send you, and you shall speak whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said to me, Now I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I anoint you over the nations and over the kingdoms to pluck up and to pull down, to destroy, to overthrow, to build, and to plant. Friends, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God for it. Jeremiah is probably one of the most convicting books in the Bible that much like his other, the other prophets uh, in the Bible, like Isaiah and Ezekiel, prophets uh, were called apart from God to speak a word of truth, often calling people and God, uh, the country of Israel, in this case Judah, back into the most righteous ways of living. But I wanted to start this morning by saying that I believe, at least for me, that all people are set apart to play some role in this beautiful thing of God's creation. Everybody's set apart to do God's work in this world in some kind of way. And that what lays the foundation for us to do that is everything that we were born and raised to be. Oftentimes we might go through hard circumstances in our life that then, you know, prepared us for something later in life, even if those situations were tragic. Our life experiences that we go through, good and bad, lend themselves to the hope and care and taking care of others, giving good advice to other people, and that God can use almost anything in our lives to be part of that work that God's called us to do. So as I'm going to go out, and I want to kind of go through just quickly, line by line in this, but what I want us to be thinking about as we talk about this is, what's your work and your call? So as I explain a little bit about Jeremiah's work and his call, I wonder if there's anything that you can find parallels into your own life, or maybe you're in a period of your life where you're discerning what it is that God has for you. Um, and the first thing is, you know, Jeremiah, his lot in his life, when he was born, was given the lot by God to testify to the death of his own country. And that he saw his country pass through brief periods of independence at this time, but he also saw it fall victim to the imperial ambitions of Egypt and then later uh, Babylon before finally watching it destroy himself and then eventually launch a futile attempt to free itself of Babylonian rule to no avail. But when he was born in Judah, just three miles to the northeast of, uh, of, uh, of Jerusalem, when he was born, they were just a vassal state of Assyria in a little town called Anathos. And it's safe to assume that, uh, that someone like Jeremiah was raised in a home of some kind of conservative piety where Israel's ancient traditions and the words of the prophets were probably known and recited in his home. We find out later in his writings that he had an extreme bitterness towards the clergy of his day, finding them inept not calling to people back to God's way. And we may suppose that he spent hours of time in prayer and meditation about the nature and meaning of what it meant to be a covenant people and a covenant person with God. And that there was a lot about what he saw in the world that shocked him in his day. Thus, been giving this command to be called apart, to call people back and to live in God's way. And he says in verse 4, Now the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I consecrated you and I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Now, I thought of it, you know, as a dad this week, and maybe if you're a mother or father, you just did something the same thing I did this week, which is put your kids back on a school bus for another year. And if you can, when I read this text, that before I formed you in the womb, that I knew you, it got me thinking as I put my oldest on the bus this week. He's going to fourth grade. It was a new building and everything for him, and he was really nervous to get on the bus and, and be with a new class and a, and, a, and a new school building. And when I look back at the days when Aaron and I were in Germany, I can specifically remember the first time that he moved in Aaron's belly. We were laying in bed that night, and she you know, had me put my hand uh, right there to feel the spot where James was then moving. I remember that moment really distinctly. 
perhaps more pertinent to this text, I remember when James was born and holding him for the first time, thinking that I already knew him. Then seeing him and holding him and caressing that little, that, that, that little boy, that, that there was something about in that, in that moment that he was exactly as he should, then, and that he was somebody that I've known for a long, for a long time. In that same way, Jeremiah puts the word of the Lord in saying that God knows us before we were informed. More importantly, God knows the role that he wants you to play in this world. And that he was consecrated to do this work for God. In that case, uh, to be made holy uh, and to be, uh, to be set apart for this specific task. But when, when we say that God knew Jeremiah, it, it's a callback to Genesis 19, uh, this idea of being known by God resonated in the same way in Genesis 19 with God knowing his people of Israel, knowing that he's also given them a task for this world. And it says to keep the way of the Lord by doing righteousness and justice in the world. Jeremiah's call and life circumstances brought him to the inescapable awareness that his very life was claimed by God. As I held James there in that hospital, I also knew in that moment that this child was not solely mine. I remember placing my hand on James's head and praying the Lord's Prayer. And in that moment, consecrating his life and our life together to God's, knowing that uh, this child is not just mine, also belongs to God. But Jeremiah gets this call and that everything that brought him to this moment of receiving this call, even though he thinks he's too young, and we're going to get to that in a minute, brought him to this inescapable awareness that his life was claimed by God. Your life is claimed by God. God has a purpose for you. Verse 6, then I said, Ah, Lord God, truly I do not know how to speak, for I am only a boy. I've gotten the pleasure of listening to pastors call stories all throughout the United Methodist Church and other denominations. One common theme that comes up is that I ran from the ministry or ran from God's call on my life in some kind of way before God finally caught up. And friends, God always catches up. Moses, like Abraham and Sarah, may have considered themselves too old for God's mission, but here we find that Jeremiah considers himself too young. And during this portion of Josiah's reign, the most prominent, genuine prophetic figure is the prophetess Hula. So, but God is preparing young Jeremiah here for a time when the consensus of the royal prophets will be a false prophecy telling people what they want to hear, that God is not upset about injustice and sin in their land. See, God is starting Jeremiah off very young because Jeremiah's mission to Israel is going to take his entire lifetime. And that everything God has led Jeremiah through to this point is exactly what he's going to need in order to do what God called him to do. The very nature of God's calling on Jeremiah here tells us that contrary to our popular belief, confidence in God's call is not a prerequisite to answering God's call. I'm too young. I possibly couldn't do it. Resistance, it does seem, is necessary to the preference. Reference all of the call stories that I heard that says, you know what, God, I don't know if it's me. Oftentimes, the call that God puts on our life is not one that we even take up willingly. Most of the time, it's one that we take up begrudgingly. And the path we find ourselves on, we often find on the path that we take to avoid it. Like I said, it's a common theme when someone knows, feels the nudge from God's Holy Spirit that He's put a certain call on their life, that it should be something that you run from something that you hesitate to answer. Verse 7, But the Lord said to me, Do not say I am only a boy, for you shall go to all to whom I send you, and you shall speak whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. An important lesson that Jeremiah learns here is that God's call in his life is not about his ability, but God's ability. Scripture often reiterates that God is near the broken and far from the proud. God rarely calls us to do what we could do on our own. We do not need God to hear a call from God for that. God instead calls us to what is impossible for us to do on our own so that we learn to depend on God through the walk in His call. 
In 2 Corinthians 2.16, speaking of his own ministry and his own hardship, Paul asked, who is sufficient to do these things? His answer resounds several verses later, not that we are sufficient on our own. Our sufficiency is from God. Like Jeremiah, we can do what God calls us to do, not because of who we are, but because of the one who is with us. You ever heard of the saying imposter syndrome? It's a syndrome that I have all the time, or I am, also, I am constantly, even as the pastor of this church or as someone who leads a nonprofit down here, constantly uh, living in fear that someone is going to find out that I have no idea what I'm doing. And that oftentimes, sometimes that's the fuel that kind of keeps me going in sometimes healthy and unhealthy ways. But the, the idea that, that, that and, and many people face this, and, and, that, and that we're just imposters, and that we couldn't possibly do what it is that God called us to do. But we find out in Jeremiah that when we answer God's call, God has given us more than enough, and it is not about my ability to, to do I have the ability to, to, to answer, and it's often more about God's sufficiency to be with you through it. It doesn't have to be perfect, and neither do you. Verse 9, And the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said to me, Now I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over the nations and over kingdoms to pluck up and to pull down, to destroy and to overthrow and to plant. Jeremiah is going to face resistance for the things he's going to say and do. Resistance, if the work of ministry and the call in your life is non-threatening or comfortable, my guess is you would be hard-pressed to grasp some kind of prophetic dimension to that kind of ministry. Comfort often doesn't breathe the kind of prophetic vision God calls us to, to have in this world. And oftentimes, the kind of opposition and the kind of opposition Jeremiah is going to face in some later chapters here is not direct opposition, but the opposition of cons consensus. And let me explain what I mean by this. Facing opposition when someone is diametrically opposed to you is often easier than when a prophet is called to face some kind of consensus. Where opposition provides some kind of clear lines of battle and an enemy to rally support and encouragement around against other people, but to battle consensus, the way things are, the way things have always been, the way things most people want them to be, supporters are harder to come by, in particular, more devoted ones. But finding folks who are willing to go the distance and face down all the challenges that will certainly come through the long haul is something completely different. Jeremiah will be facing something that we call collective sin, where it's just the pattern of the age where it becomes something entirely different than what it is that God intended to be. And friends, even today, all of us are embroiled into some forms of collective sin, whether that be uh, systematic racism in our communities, whether that be our propensity to further wars and violence in other countries, whether that be our lack of support for the poor and the marginalized of our countries. And that when people simply throw up their, ha house, or their, their hands and simply say, that is the way it is, and when someone, a prophetic figure like Martin Luther King comes along and starts the poor people's campaigns, it's quickly put down. Jeremiah knows that what he's about to face is going to be something very difficult. And again, God calls him to rely not on his own sufficiency to be through it, but God's sufficiency to be with Jeremiah through it. The one who stands under the call of God is given a powerful word of assurance, but that assurance should not let us take the calls on all of our lives very lightly. There will be times when Jeremiah will want to let go, when the forces aligned against him will beat him down sufficiently that he cries out in anger to God why God even gave him the call to begin with, see, but to the prophet. The larger danger is the judgment of God not the hostilities of the community. Friends, back to your call 
God has set you apart for something very special in this world. I believe that for every individual person in this world. In the same way God placed that call upon the prophet Jeremiah, God calls you, each of us, with our own unique set of gifts to bring to the world something beautiful. I hope you take some time this week on discerning what that is. Knowing that when God gives you that small nudge or even that little whisper within your heart, resistance is expected. Fleeing from that call is expected. And we do not need to rely on our own sufficiency to answer it. Instead, we should rely on God's. Friends, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, I ask you to go in peace, listen for God, and answer the call.